Okay, so let me give you a couple of examples on how to find domain and range, okay, of sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay, so example one. Okay, so suppose I have this trigonometric function. I have three sine of five, okay, five x, everything minus two. Okay, and I put this right here, okay, for you to know what are the domain and range of respective functions. So for sine, the domain is all the real numbers, the range is minus one and one, between those two values, including minus one and one, okay? For cosine, it is the same thing. For tangent, it is, or the domain is all the real numbers, except those x values that we have a vertical asymptote. They are at pi over two plus or minus n pi, n being a natural number. So pi over two plus or minus one times pi, two times pi, three times pi, and so forth. And the range is all the real numbers. Okay, so if we have this and we're asked to find the domain and range, how could you go about solving the problem? Well, for sine, the domain is easy. So if they ask you for the domain, the domain is all, okay, the real numbers. Okay, the domain is all the real numbers. We are done with that. How about the range? What is the range? Well, let's find the range, okay? And we're going to find it in a way that resembles, or actually we're going to find it using inequalities, okay? So we know that the range of sine of x, so sine of x, the range of it, less than or equal to 1 and greater or equal to minus 1. Okay, so sine of x or the range of sine of x is between minus 1 and 1, including minus 1, including 1. This is what this thing right here means, okay? So somehow what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert or change this inequality that I have right here, okay? Or the function that I have inside the inequality, okay? To look like 3 sine of 5x minus 2. To look like this. Okay? So, I have sine of x and then here I have sine of 5x. Okay? Tempering with the x or evaluating different x's into sine and cosine does not change the range. Okay? So, here instead of sine of x, I can just write sine of 5x. And that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to write sine of 5x. Okay? Still, the range is between minus 1 and 1. Okay? However... Here I have 3 sine of 5x, okay? So in order to convert this sine of 5x into 3 sine of 5x, I have to multiply everything by 3. And that is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to multiply everything by 3, okay? So this will be minus 3 is less than or equal to 3 sine of 5x is less than or equal to 3, okay? So I have done this part. I have completed this. Now I have to add this minus 2, okay? And again, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a minus 2 to everything, okay? So this will be minus 3 minus 2. So it will be minus 5 is less than or equal to 3 sine of 5x, okay? Minus 2 is less than or equal to 3 minus 2 is just 1, okay? And that's it. I have found the range, okay, of 3 sine of 5x minus 2, everything minus 2. The range is between minus 5, sorry, minus 5 and 1, okay? Including minus 5, including 1, okay? Do you see how easy it is? So let me give you another example. So example two. Suppose I have sine of x minus 2 plus 8. Okay, and I'm asked to find the domain and range. Well, for the domain, okay, the domain is easy. The domain is all the real numbers. Okay, how about the range? Well, let's find the range. So we know that for sine of x minus 2, the range is between 1 and minus 1. Okay, 
So here I have sine of x minus 2 plus 8, everything plus 8. So all I'm going to do is just I'm going to add 8 to everything. So it's going to be minus 1 plus 8 is less than or equal to sine of x minus 2 plus 8 is less than or equal to 1 plus 8. Okay, so here we will have 7 is less than or equal to sine of x minus 2 plus 8 is less than or equal to 9. Okay, and therefore the range, okay, is between 7 and 9. Okay, including 7, including 9. Okay, so let me give you an example with cosine. Okay, cosine is exactly the same thing. So example 3, suppose I have cosine or let's say 1 over 4 cosine of 5x. And we're asked to find the domain and range of this function. Okay, so we know that the domain is all the real numbers. Okay, all the real numbers. Okay, so just for sake of making this a little bit harder, so let's add a minus 3 right here. Okay, so everything minus 3. Okay, how about the range? Well, let's find the range. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put cosine of 5x in between 1 and minus 1. Okay, so here I have 1 over 4 cosine of 5x, so I'm going to multiply everything by 1 over 4. Okay, so this is going to be minus 1 over 4 is less than or equal to cosine of 5x. Let's not forget the 1 over 4 is less than or equal to 1 over 4. Okay, and we have a minus 3, so it will be minus 1 over 4 minus 3 is greater or equal to 1 over 4 cosine of 5x. Everything minus 3 is greater or equal to 1 over 4 minus 3. And this is the range of this function, okay? It is between minus 1 over 4 minus 3 and 1 over 4 minus 3. Okay, you can simplify this, but that is the range of this function. Okay, so... Let me give you another example, and let's talk about tangent. So this is sine, this is cosine. Let's talk about tangent. So example 4, suppose I have this function, okay? I have 2 tan of 2x, and I'm asked to find the domain and range, okay? We know that the range is all the real numbers, okay? So let's start with the range. The range is all the real numbers. Okay, how about the domain? Well, the domain is all the real numbers except at those x values that we have asymptotes, that we have vertical asymptotes. So let's find the asymptotes for 2 tan of 2x. Okay, so we know that tempering with the y of the function does not change the domain. Tempering with the x changes the domain. Okay, so here we have, well, first of all, the, do, the domain, okay, is all the, the domain of tan of x, okay? The domain of tan of x is all the real numbers except x equaling to pi over 2 plus or minus n pi, n being a natural number, okay? So because at these x values, we have vertical asymptotes. What if we have 2x, okay? That's exactly what you're going to do to find the domain of tan. Okay, whatever you have with the x, you're just going to put it in this equation. Okay, well, we have 2x equaling to pi over 2 plus or minus n pi. So you have to get rid of this 2 right here. What you're going to do is you're going to multiply everything by 1 over 2. So if you multiply this side by 1 over 2, you will be left with x equaling to 1 over 2 pi over 2 plus or minus n pi times 1 over 2. So x equals to pi over 4 plus or minus n over 2 pi. Okay, so at these x values, we have vertical asymptotes. Okay, so the domain is all the real numbers except x equaling to this. Okay, so domain is all the 
real numbers except x equaling to this. Okay, x equaling to this. Okay, do you see how easy it is? Let me give you another example. So example five. Example five. Suppose I have three tan of x minus pi over four, everything minus three. Okay, and I'm asked to find the domain and range of this function. Well, the range is all the real numbers. Okay, the range is equals to all the real numbers. Okay, how about the domain? Well, the domain is, so the domain of tan of x, so equals to all the real numbers except x equaling to pi over 2 plus or minus n pi. So it equals to x equaling to, okay, so the domain is not equaling to x. I'm just, forget about this equal sign right here. Is x equaling to pi over 2 plus or minus n pi, okay? The domain equals to all the real numbers except x equaling to these values. Okay, so we can put this. The same goes for this here. It should be like that. So if x equals to pi over 2 plus or minus n pi, this is where the vertical asymptotes are. What if you have x minus pi over 4? So if you have x minus pi over 4 equaling to pi over 2 plus or minus n pi, what does x equal to? Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this minus pi over 4 to the other side. So I'll have x equaling to pi over 4 plus pi over 2 plus or minus n pi. So this equals to, so if I have a 4 right here, it will be pi plus 2 pi, okay, plus or minus n pi. So this equals to 3 pi over 4 plus or minus n pi. So I have vertical asymptotes at 3 pi over 4 plus or minus n pi, okay? So the domain equals to all the real numbers except x equaling to this, x equaling to this, okay? So that's basically it. This is how we find domain and range of sine, cosine, and tangent, okay? And with this, we come to the end of this lecture.